burden now Bear all comforts as we travel along the way We share a common gift, our covenant in Christ And we're going to celebrate His love today We will sing and celebrate His love today When we come to join As we travel along the way We share a common gift Our covenant in Christ And we're going to celebrate His love today We will sing and celebrate His love today The Lord established for him A covenant of peace And made him the prince That he might have the dignity Of the priesthood forever In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. We celebrate today the memorial of Saint Leo the Great. He was Pope during the 5th century, at a time when there were many heresies that were prevailing in the Church, especially about Christ's incarnation, His divinity, and his very being. And these various views gave rise to confusion and disunity in the church. Pope Leo the Great gave the classic formula, which was accepted at the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451, namely that Christ is one person with two natures, divine nature and human nature united together in one person. And with that, the controversies ended. We know that Pope Leo also emphasized the primacy of the Bishop of Rome or the Pope in the Universal Church. We are also told that Pope Leo I went out to meet Attila the Hun, who had been invading various parts of Europe. Pope Leo went out and pleaded for the protection of the city of Rome. And we are told that Attila the Hun just went back without destroying the city. Later, Pope Leo once again pleaded for the city that it would not be destroyed or plundered by the Vandals. Pope Leo, therefore, in that sense, protected the people. He was able to unite the church and he taught very effectively. His writings are greatly revered. We thank the Lord for the great example of St. Leo the Great, and we ask for his intercession. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who never allow the gates of hell to prevail against your church, firmly founded on the apostolic rock, grant her, we pray that through the intercession of Pope St. Leo, she may stand firm in your truth and know the protection of lasting peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. It is for you to preach the behavior which goes with healthy doctrine. The older men should be reserved, dignified, moderate, sound in faith, and love and constancy. Similarly, the older women should behave as though they were religious, with no scandal mongering and no habitual wine drinking. They are to be teachers of the right behavior and show the younger women how they should love their husbands and love their children, how they are to be sensible and chaste, and how to work in their homes and be gentle and do as their husbands tell them, so that the message of God is never disgraced. In the same way, you have got to persuade the younger men to be moderate in everything you do. Make yourselves an example to them for working for good. When you are teaching, be an example to them in your sincerity and earnestness and in keeping all that you say so wholesome that nobody can make objections to it. And then any opponent will be at a loss with no accusation to make against us. You see, God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, he will grant your heart's desire. Our response, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. He protects the lives of the upright. Their heritage will last forever. The Lord guides the step of a man and makes safe the path of the one he loves. Our response, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Then, turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. The just shall inherit the land. There they shall live forever. Our response, the salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Which of you with a servant plowing or minding sheep would say to him when he returned from the fields, Come and have your meal immediately? Would he not be more likely to say, Get my supper laid, make yourself tidy and wait on me while I eat and drink? You can eat and drink yourself afterwards. Must he be grateful to the servant for doing what he was told? So with you, when you have done all you have been told to do, say, we are merely servants. We have done no more than our duty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The 
gospel passage that we've just heard reminds us that God calls us to serve him faithfully. He has assigned responsibilities to each one of us and we are to serve him faithfully. We trust him, we depend on him. God holds everything in his hands and he is faithful to his promises. And therefore, in responding in faith, we will experience the fullness of life that God wishes to give to us. We will experience meaning in life. We will experience fulfillment. Pope Leo the Great was faithful to the responsibilities that God had entrusted to him. And he carried those out faithfully. And so we seek the intercession of Pope Leo the Great as we strive to carry out our own responsibilities that the Lord asks of each one of us. Paul's letter to Titus gives good advice to families and to society. He speaks of the value of elders, how they can be role models in the Christian life. They have much to contribute to the good of the family to the good of society. Both Pope John Paul II and Pope Francis have spoken of how in the family there is learning, there is a sharing of experiences and different generations come together. And this provides enrichment for each of the members of the family. Often we think and speak of generation gap, of the difficulty of communication, of lack of communication but rather we are to see different generations coming together in the family for the enrichment of each one truly we thank God for the elders in our family and we look to them as models of faith st. Paul in this reading has beautiful gems he tells us give up everything that does not lead to God leave it aside and seek only that which leads you closer to God. And then he, the reading concludes with, have no ambition except to do good. My dear friends, right through this day, may we be guided by this principle. Have no amb ambition except to do good. May the Lord guide us all through this day and Saint Leo the Great intercede for us. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Through the offerings made here, we pray, O Lord, graciously shed light on your church so that your flock may everywhere prosper and that under your governance, the shepherds may become pleasing to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Leo, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Leo, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the power, the power and, the and the glory are yours, are yours now, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, 
I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to govern the church you have nourished by this holy meal, so that firmly directed, she may enjoy ever greater freedom and persevere in integrity of religion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Make me a servant humble and meek Lord let me lift up those who are weak and may the prayer of my heart always be make me a servant make me a servant make a servant today. May I heal the sick and the crippled mind, bring back the sheep that stray. May I see Make me a 
yourself in today.